Okay, well, hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Michelle Arcussi and I'm the executive director for She Is The Music. Um, this event is particularly exciting as it was put together by the incredible Binda Naomi Brown, co-chair of our newest She Is The Music Chicago chapter, along with Amy Kaplan, Colleen Maris, and Katie Sexton. Um, Binta was kind enough to wrangle these incredible, busy, amazing women to discuss their work, working relationship, issues within the industry, and everything in between. So thank you again all so much for participating today. Um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Binta, founder of Omalili Projects, co-founder of Black Music Action Coalition, and head of operations and strategy at Keep Cool and RCA. So thanks everyone. Hi, good morning and afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad to be doing this panel. So glad to be kicking off a chapter of She Is The Music in Chicago. Um, and you know, for those who don't know, Chicago is the, the third largest music market uh, in the country and it continues like year after year uh, to, to contribute uh, and inspire enormous talent. And so we're really excited to be doing this here in Chicago. And I'm so grateful to my friends uh, who are here on this panel, as well as, as each of you uh, for coming through to help us kick this off and get this thing going. Um, so, so why this panel? Like, how did this come to be? Um, I think, I personally believe that all of us needs to have a personal board of directors, uh, a personal group of friends, like in, in, in the business, in industry, uh, to whom you can go with any question, uh, any concern. Um, and, you know, for the last several years, you know, th this group of incredible women, uh, plus a couple of others uh, who couldn't join us today, um, but who wish they could join us, uh, have been engaged in helping each other in whatever ways we possibly can. Uh, you know, communicating by chat, having Zoom cocktails, uh, talking about things that are going on in the business. Um, I could go on and on and on. I think that everybody here knows Lou, knows Dina, knows JJ. And so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time getting into each of our bios because um, they, they speak for themselves. Uh, and we could spend all day just talking about you know, our bios. These are you know, several of the most talented women without exception in the music business. There's just no other way to describe them. But not only the most talented women in the music business, um, people who each of us have such great heart um, and such an urgency to bring, uh, you know, particular values of, of justice um, and equality into our work and into everything we do. So, with no further ado, I'm going to kick it off. We're going to start getting into the questions. Thank you all so much for submitting questions in advance. Um, we appreciate that. It gave us a little bit of time to think about things. Um, so I'm just going to throw it out and we're going to have a conversation like we have conversations with each other, whether it's over our text thread or Zoom calls or anything else. And we're going to try to keep it as, as tight as we possibly can. So first question, just to get ourselves warmed up, is what is a typical day like in the life of any of us? I mean, for me, there's no typical day, I, you know. I never know what the day is like. I never know what it's going to be like. You know, I have two small kids. I'm a single mom. I never know what happened overnight. I live in New York. I don't know what's going on in London or LA. So, you know, a typical day is literally just being malleable. That's what a typical day is like. It's putting out fires, you know, dealing with emergencies. You might have your schedule and it's, you know, and it's just being, like I said, malleable. <laughs> Dina, Lou. I agree with JJ. Um, it's it, it, my day is governed by the crisis that happened with my clients overnight. That's what it is. So I might have my own agenda for what I need to do for the day, but it all depends. If someone's getting sued, they have to get sued. They're getting a divorce. They're you know whatever happens because as the lawyer. For my client, I act as their general counsel. So anything legal comes under my realm. So my day gets redefined pretty quickly based upon things that happen to them. And like JJ, I have small kids and 
you know, I'm married and I have to do all, you know, I just have to be like responsible and show up. It's a lot. <laughs> I think I know for a fact that Dina's day, because Dina is also uh, one of my attorneys. Dina's day starts around 5.30 in the morning. I'm pretty sure based on when I start getting, I there's been a couple of times when I've been surprised because in Chicago, I do um, time zone arbitrage between the East Coast and LA. And I'm like, well, nobody in LA is going to be up yet texting me. So like, this is my time to get you know, <laughs> a handful of things done. And then I look at my text messages and I have like three or four different text messages from Dina across a variety of different issues. <laughs> Lou, how about you? Well, for me, I mean, we're, I think all of us are going to say the same thing. Um, just because there's people dialed in, I thought I'd share, you know, more of what it's like to try to manage my day a little bit. Um, probably, um, at the end of last year, I kind of set a new rhythm for myself in planning and managing my day in which on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I book no appointments and I book no calls. And it allows me those three days to get done the things that are constantly looming for me to get done. And then on Thursdays, I start booking back to back from one o'clock until five or six. And then depending on which coast I am, obviously, um, that impacts that decision. And, and that's really allowed me to have free space mentally and know that I have this carved out time for me to deal with you know, um, things that I need to get done, but because of the daily fires, you know, end up in the way. Yeah, I, I, for me, my ability to manage the, because I have four different jobs um, and, and my ability to manage each of those different jobs requires me to have a really rigorous routine. Um, and so the day to day for me is about really sticking to a routine. I get up, I, I'm actually not going to say what time I get up each day because I don't want anybody to get the idea that they should start, you know, communicating with me then. But I get up, I start my day, I try to make sure that I pray every day, I try to meditate, I try to um, uh, uh, exercise for at least a half an hour, even if it's just here uh, in my loft. Um, like there's a handful of different things that I do. I call it my zone of privacy at the beginning of the day. And then I carve out a zone of privacy for myself towards the end of the day as well, uh, which includes spending time uh, uh, typically over or always over the course of the last year over FaceTime with my mom uh, and talking to her and finding out what she's been up to. But then, th and that gives the freedom for the rest of the day to be as chaotic as it can. I know that I need to be flexible, but it's really hard for me to be flexible if I don't have um, certain elements of my routine that can't be uh, manipulated or, uh, or adjusted, um, or, you know, or changed, uh, by, by all of the emergencies that come up. Um, so let's get into the thing that I think most of the, the folks who are here today are really interested in knowing about, which is, you know, the nature of our relationship, how we all work together, how we know one another, um, and what kind of changes we're working to get, you know, like the, the way the question was posed is what are the changes we want to see in the industry? Um, but a lot of our friendship and a lot of our collaboration is working together to create change uh, in the industry. So let's just like start digging into that, that part of the conversation. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to kick it over to JJ first, because I know she has so many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can talk about this forever. I mean, you know, I think ultimately the change in the industry is for the people at the top to look like the people who are the artists as well as the people who are consuming the music, right? And that's a very, very easy way of saying, um, anybody who was not represented in the constitution, like we should be represented. <laughs> like we need, to, we need to be there, we need to be taking care of each other. Um, and it's been, you know, look, we all have been in this music industry for a really long time. We've all made major contributions to it. We are all just as smart as the person next to us that was, you know, was part of the original constitution and not an amendment. And we deserve the same treatment, access, opportunity, pay, you know, worth, enterprise value, all of the above, right? And it's taken the music industry a very long time and the women in the music industry to kind of get together, um, you know, and really like, you know, have a she is the music and 
really targeted thing because for the most part, if you were saying that you were a woman, there was some retribution to that. And it wasn't like really, it was frowned upon and it was not something that we talked about. However, the women on this panel were not like that. Dina and I have known each other since the very beginning when I represented Jay-Z, she represented Tupac and like, she, you know, would be on my ass about, you need to do this and you need to do that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I do. And why are you so bossy? And I love it. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, Lou and I worked together because we hired her for an audit for Jay-Z and that was in 2010. And we've had each other's backs like since then. And then the three of us realized that we are all have this thing in common, which is we really, really from the bottom of our hearts, very, very deeply care about lifting women up and supporting women like we really care about it it really bothers us that there's a one office for women in every record label every publishing company every live touring organization every agency it, we're 50 percent of the population we deserve equal everything equal access you know whatever but that's you know my lofty speech on my Listen, apple box. You know, to, to follow up what jj says like it's still a man's world like until these major labels which is warner's universal and sony until it's the, these labels are run by a women it's always going to be that way like the women that are in these companies they don't have a lot of power no matter what their title is no matter what they say they will always get shut down at the top if the white man at the top doesn't like what they're doing and I got to tell you, I represent a lot of executives in the music business, you know, both men and women. And I'm going to tell you that there are women in other companies that are getting paid less than men in this same job at other companies. For my women executives, I have to demand, I have to demand title increases, demand salary increases. I have to demand for men, it's freely given. You know, it is crazy. And women are so loyal. Like I will say to women, like, why the fuck are you still there? These people are yeah. broke. I need to help you get to it. And they're like, well, I just got, you know, it's, it's going to turn. It's going to turn. And my men executives, they'll just sell their mother up the river to go somewhere else if the money's better and the title's better. Like it's, it's literally, it's a thing. And I deal yeah. with it today. I, I, I have to say that, you know, with Dina, like she's, she's, this, so this is not just talk. Like, like from, from each of these women, um, I, I have learned to ask for what, not only what I need, uh, but what I deserve, you know, like, it, it, like across the board. And it's something that is sometimes hard for us as women, you know, to, to, because we, we're worried about so much else in addition to doing just a great job. Like we know we're gonna do a great job. We know we're organized, we know we're capable, and we know we're competent. But for some reason, we sometimes have difficulty asking for what we deserve, what we need. And sometimes we can feel really badly about it. Um, we and all do 10 jobs. You all, all the women executives do four different jobs. I'm like, why are you running? Why are you COO, general manager, head of business affairs, and also, you know, supervising the A&R department who's not coming to fucking work? Why are you doing all these things? Mm -hmm. like, Side note, she's not talking about our A&R department at Keep Cool. Tunji comes to work every single day, so I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta speak up for him on that regard. But otherwise, yes. Sorry, Lou. I think you were about to say something. Okay. Um, just a little bit of a different take. You know, I'm the benefit. Both Dina and I work together on, uh, you know, Tupac post mortem. And Dina, you know, when you look at the opportunity to work with other women, just like JJ hired me for Jay Z. You know, when you get into a place where you can work with other women, um, you know, it's like JJ and I always talk about that. Why don't you hire females? Like there's not going to be a real change unless we get into a position, um, you know, to hire women to do the work. You know, I probably have the largest overhead just by sheer number of staff and office locations. But, you know, for us, we've always been, you know, pro-female at TriStar, um, not allowing salary gaps, and then also uh, being able to accommodate just the changing, you know, life events that folks have as they start to go into motherhood. Like we, we've been able to equip women to work from home who wanted to stay home with their children where we can, we're in business management. So there's definitely times when we can't do that. 
But my point is being sympathetic to those types of um, events that happen. You know, having, I've, I have, you know, staff sometimes that I had one who just had a, you know, an almost catastrophic event with her daughter who almost passed away. And she was like, brand new here, had only been working here like five weeks. And we immediately just told her, go take care of your daughter. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your time. And I get people in corporations can't do that, but folks like us who actually have our own businesses and are able to control that, we can do things just out of a, a pure place of just being kind, first of all, <laughs> um, and, and being able to give back the way that people actually didn't do for us. You know, and, and my mentor, I think most of you have seen me post about Mama Mike or Marceline Bernardo. She was the first ever black female executive of what was then CBS Records in 1975. And when I first started working with her, which had to be like in 1990, when um, I was working on Uptown Records, Mike was an African-American woman um, had come up through the C-suite. She had been a VP of regional um, promotion. And, you know, she gave me the best piece of advice. She goes, just always do a great job. She said, if you do a great job, it'll come to you. And, and you know, and, and I get it. There's some people who do great jobs and they're dealing with the system, but just doing a great job, I at least received the benefit of doing a great job and being able to, you know, build a practice. I, I, I will say that Lou has given me some of the best advice. You probably don't remember, <laughs> um, but, but you know, like a couple years ago, gave me some of the best advice I've ever received, which is to keep, like, to remember that you take yourself with you wherever you go, and so does everybody else. <laughs> um, and so if you're somebody who's doing great work, keep doing great work and take that, like, take that take that essence of who you are with you into everything that you're doing and not to worry about it. Um, and I, I think it's profound advice, um, which everybody uh, should focus on. Um, you know, like in terms yeah, of, I, you know, I, I, what's that, Lou? But I always tell my staff, what do you bring with you into the room? Yeah. yeah she tells that to me. <laughs> to me. She goes, remember, what are you bringing into the room? Lou is my hero. She has three offices, flies around these off for every two, like she's on the go every week. Like it, incredible. I don't know how she does it. I get so tired looking at Lou's schedule. And 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 always kind. Oh, each, of you, each of you, it's what what I love about this this friendship and our relationships um, and you know with each other as well as several of the other women who couldn't make it today is that no matter how stressed out or burdened we might be by what's going on there's always a kindness and a love you know there's always a and and if it's you can't get to one another right away you, there, there's there's some acknowledgement and and so it, it's a really really beautiful thing and you know i i mentioned this because um, some of the, one of the other questions we, 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 we got is, what is our advice to women coming up? Um, and, you know, I'll go first with this, you know, when I, I, I have the opportunity to lecture to a lot of colleges and universities and to a lot of groups of high school students. And what I oftentimes tell them, particularly those who are in music business programs or who are at law schools where there are a number of folks who are uh, attempting or wanting to become music lawyers, is to look around you and to think about the group of people who are in your midst because these are people with whom you're going to work and be doing things you know hopefully for the rest of your career and to just start forming those relationships early on with people whom you can trust you know with people who share you know like what makes this work is that we have fundamental values in terms of the things we are fighting for in our business as well as in society you know like jj said you know like fundamentally wanting to make sure that women are advancing and that we have a voice and not just that we have a voice but that we're compensated and credited for the work that we do right and so look look around you and like be aware that memories are all so long so form those relationships form form good quality relationships with people as early as you possibly can and then keep building and then keep seeing who else who else you can help like who is around you uh, that whom you can bring up, you know, like each each person here 
has put the other one on in some way. Lou has helped us, actually, Dina, JJ, and Lou helped us get BMAC started, the Black Music Action Coalition, last summer. Gave me some of the absolute best advice, you know, have not allowed me to say, ah, well, you know, that's okay, we don't really need to do that. You know, Lou helped put together the deck, you know, like JJ, you know, sort of like said, Benta, no, that's not good. <laughs> like there are a bunch of times where <laughs> JJ would say, that's not good enough. Or in only the way that JJ can do it, well, why? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you doing that? You actually did that to me the other night. <laughs> Why aren't you doing that? And it's, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm doing it. You know, and like Dina, you know, like the same way, like you need to be here, you need to be here, like just figure it out. And so, you know, like help me to form BMAC. You know, like Dina has been advisor to us, you know, counsel to some of us, JJ similarly, you know, like, like we all work each other, work, work with each other in ways where we're putting one another on constantly and that's the other advice that i would give uh to folks is make sure that you're putting other women on you know like there's sometimes when you can't be on a panel or you can't take a job or you know that something is opening up so you know look at your group of women friends and they're all going to be competent because you're probably not going to be friends with people who are completely incompetent look at your group of friends and figure out you know like who you can recommend for this slot or for that slot you know when you know when you're aware that those slots are coming up i mean that's mm -hmm. that's part of how we begin to create change and then look back and try to mentor i mean each of these women are mentors of mine you know i, I studied jj's career for a very long time before i ended up uh you know as part of chances team i was like all right jj she's like she's actually the model because she's done what i've been asked to come and do here um and so you know, like make sure that you are mentoring and making yourself selves available to mentor others because you get a lot of value that way as well. I've gone way too long. Um, let me kick it over this time to Lou uh, for, you know, like advice to folks who are coming up. Well, you know, I personally, and again, I'm probably, you know, going to get a lot of grief for this. I, <laughs> mentorship. I come from the other side of that. I, I think it's very hard to mentor people like in the process of work, best business practice, adding to knowledge-based skill set, you should be an observer. And one of the things when we onboard new staff at TriStar, we tell them you are responsible for your own personal growth. We're going to give you tools. I'm not responsible for that, you have to add to your knowledge base skill set. So, being able to give counsel or advice is one thing, but if somebody calls me up and goes, Hey, I want you to mentor me, I, you know, it's just not possible at this stage to do it. So, for everybody who's dialed in, it's like, read the trades, go to conferences, dial into things that you can. I mean, I would eat, breathe, and sleep. Like I was fascinated by Clive Davis, right, in the beginning, because, you know, here he was a, a lawyer who basically, you know, was in the, the midst of the technical aspects of the music business and ended up having these ears and this passion. Like it was so crazy to watch him develop his career when he talked about carrying around LPs in his suitcase. And years later, as I became friends with um, Doug Davis, he was like, listen, all of that was true. That's what you know, dad did. So anyway, all of that to say, I would encourage everybody who's on, like I think Benta, you asked, you know, what are some of the great reads? It's like, whatever inspires you. I think it's really hard to be in this business if you're not naturally driven with a heart to serve and be involved in the art because it's a service-based business regardless of what your technical gifting is. You know, what would you add? I mean, look, mentorship is a big part of what I do. Like, you know, cause I taught like you at you know, law school for 20 years and, you know, and you just gotta find, go where the love is. That's what they tell you in the programs recovery. Go where the love is, you know, because we all can sit here on the Zoom and we know a handful of women in the music industry that don't help other women. We you those pretty much, you know who those people are. Um, try to stay away from those people. They ain't gonna help you. You know, and these artists to get up here and say, oh, yeah, women, women, women. And then you look and they're represented by men for the past 30 years that have one woman in their life. Right. These people are full of shit, right. you know, and, you know, you have to go where the love is. You know, I always tell someone, are you going to be a female lobster or a male lobster? And that's the truth, because 
when you're boiling a pot of lobsters, if there's ma if there are male lobsters, you have to keep the lid on the pot because if not, they'll help each other out of the pot. <laughs> but if they're female lobsters, you don't have to put the lid on because they pull each other down, like seriously. So, you know, you got to figure out where the people are that you can, that will help you. You know, and Lou said, one of the things- I need to know my National Geographic mind needs to know, is that actually true? Well, I heard it on um, the L word. <laughs> <laughs> then it must be true. <laughs> it was on TV. Yeah. Obviously. If that's true, man, the memes are going to be flying. <laughs> I think it's, well, I heard it on the L word. Jennifer Beale said it, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? Like, I love what Lou said. Like, you know, you have to be, if you, we're in a service business. And the best thing about JJ and Lou and I, and the three of us, we go back 20, I go back 20 years with each of these women, you know? It's a long time. And the, the advice you gave Vince about finding people and, and go, growing up with them is it. I mean, when I first started practicing law, five minutes, you know, I met these women. And, you know, we've been in each other's lives professionally and personally throughout the entire two decades that we've known each other. You know, but being of service is a big part of what we do because we are, we represent people and we are of service. So in and outside of our business, I mean, whether it's like your clients having personal stuff, you know, whatever, it's like, it's all about being of service. It's a big part of it. I will uh, finish by telling you a story that I don't even know if I ever told Dina and Lou. Um, but when I first wanted to get in the music industry, I knew, like, I went to Cornell Law School solely to be a music attorney. I went to Hughes, Hubbard, and Reed, um, which is a big Wall Street firm, and I was working there for about a year. There was a guy there who had worked there, and then he went to work for an electro, and he was like, when you're ready, I'll introduce you. So, you know, he got me in the interview at Arist, and I thought, you know, I really wanted to represent artists, so I thought that the big place I was needed to go was the firm to work for, which was Grubman and Dursky, Schindler and whatever it was called then at the time. So I get in there, I get a, um, a call to go interview there. And you know, I'm at a Wall Street firm, so I'm wearing a suit. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so overdressed. I walk in and it's like wood paneling, books, and they're all wearing suits. And I was like, okay, like this is kind of not at all what I want to do. And then, you know, it wasn't like, yeah, I could Google everybody on the internet at that time. And like, so I walk in and I start getting interviewed and all of a sudden it struck me and I was like, where are the women here? And I don't know, this is my, what I thought was going to be my dream job, the Holy Grail. And I don't know what made me do this. Cause I'm from like nothing. My mother didn't graduate from high school. I have no family money. I'm graduating from Cornell Law School and hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. I am like broke. And I'm like, this is going to be my dream job. And I say, blurts out of my mouth. And where are the women here? And the attorney that, who's still there to this day? Oh, they're out there. And I was like, the assistants? And he was like, yeah. And he had a, he had a magic eight ball on his um, desk and he like shook it and he goes, Tell me, is Jennifer Justice gonna have a big career in this industry? And he was like, um, remains to be seen or whatever that one is that maybe is. And it's like, oh, you're really ambitious, huh? And I was like, after that, it's like I'd met with three more people and, you know, I was like, okay, I hate this place. I do not that want to be there. That guy's licking your ass right now, so fuck him. What'd you say? <laughs> that guy's licking your ass right now. So <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, we're right uh, okay. right. so, what a story. Yeah, LaPolte, everybody. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, I then, a few months later, Elliot Grubman, who was leaving that firm, who I did not meet at that point, and was starting... Um, Cotico, Carol Guido and Grothman, I met with Michael and Elliot and I had to be this great like interview and was like, oh, I have this job. Like I absolutely have it. And that night, Elliot goes out to dinner and he calls me the next day and he was like, you know, I went out to dinner with my old buddies at Grubin and Dursky. You never told me you interviewed there. And I was like, you never asked. And I was like, why would they tell you? And I was a little nervous because I was like, I, you know, I really wanted the job. And he goes, well, I was saying, oh, we just met this woman and you're never going to believe her name and we're going to hire her and her name is Jennifer Justice. And the guys are like, oh yeah, we interviewed her. And he's like, well, why didn't we hire her? And they go, because she was too ambitious. <laughs> really? So, yes. And by the way, this firm to this day, to Dina's point, has a, has, has how many women there? One, two out of 40 lawyers? I'm going to torture them more. Yeah. So anyway... <laughs> It's, um, you know, goes to show you like what you think your dream is, right? Might not be your dream. 
And you really got to go with the love of who is going to be there for you and who is going to watch out for you and where you can thrive. Because there is no way I would be on this call right now if I had gotten a job there, I would be, you know, I probably would have been in and out of the business in no time. So. What a story, JJ. That's crazy. I remember calling JJ and going, JJ, you you got so much going on. You're like the powerhouse of this Jay-Z thing. This guy doesn't move without your, like, you got, what is these people that are sitting on your head? Like, <laughs> I told you she was bossy. <laughs> I, I, took, I took at least two trips to Jennifer's office and had the same conversation with her. I'm like, JJ, what are you doing? You gotta do it on your own. You gotta See, it works, ladies, supporting each other. You know, because it's hard sometimes. You're your own worst advocate, right? So it's like you need other people to do it, to step in and be like, wait a minute, like you, you know, and sometimes unsolicited advice. And that's what you need. You need people to be like, no, 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 no. You need to do more than this, right? Unsolicited, honest advice from people whom you really respect. It, it, yeah. it makes such a huge, I mean, look, Lou, again, I, I doubt that you remember this conversation. We don't need to go into it now, but like it turns your head around when you have somebody whom you really respect and who's saying like, this is the way it is. And by the way, I see you. You know, or like you, JJ, when you, I mean, like, it's literally my favorite thing. You've done this a bunch of times. Why? <laughs> like, why? You know, like a little bit different stylistically from Dina, who's like, not why, tells you what you're supposed to be doing, but it's sort of like, the, and it's, it's a great balance. Like each of you are, are a great balance in terms of styles, you know? Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. You know, I think on the mentorship point, like one thing that I would add to what Lou is saying is that, cause this happens a lot, you know, I'll get, um, you know, text messages or DMs, you know, after I've lectured somewhere or been on a panel and it's just, I think it's important to understand that the, the intention is always a good intention from people who are on panels that you're going to and you're learning from. Um, but it's very, very difficult given the complexity, not just the complexity, but given how busy everybody's jobs are, you know, like we can't necessarily respond to every single text or DM that comes through. The desire might be there in some cases, but, but it's very difficult to do that because we have to also maintain our businesses and all of us are in client facing businesses, you know, like even for me, like I'm a manager, but also on the label side, like you know, like there are artists who are involved and, and, and a lot of them, and it's extremely unpredictable. And so it can be difficult. And, you know, like there's been a couple of times where somebody has expressed, you know, disappointment that I haven't uh, been responsive, you know, like when they've had a question about something for their career. And this is my public apology, but also an explanation, which is that sometimes it can just become very difficult given, you know, like how much we've got going on with, with our jobs and with our responsibilities to our clients, our responsibilities to our families. And so to keep that in mind, because there is like to lose point, there is so much that each of us can be doing individually. Like I said before, I studied JJ's career for a very, very long time. Um, and I've told you this in the past, but you know, I, I was looking and watching as soon as I was able to figure out, oh my gosh, there's a woman behind Jay-Z like I just, like I studied, you know, like with Dina, Dina, you not, you may not know this, you may not know this at all, actually. But when I was still a partner in a big global law firm way back when, and you were first getting going with some of the legislative, uh, legislative changes you wanted to make uh, on, on behalf of artists, you and I were part of a 50 person um, group chat. I ended up not being able to do anything because I was busy dealing with corporate clients at the time. So I wasn't able to get involved, but that was my first exposure to Dina. And it was the point at which I started following, you know, like everything that Dina was doing. I would never have predicted that Dina would become somebody who's one of my, you know, uh, advisors and negotiated my most recent contract, <laughs> but here we are. And with Lou, I honestly don't know how Lou and I became friends, but I thank God. Well, What's that? Dugan. 
was it Deb Duke? I think it must have been Deb, you know, like, but I thank God for that friendship, like, every day, because you are just, like, invaluable. Um, let's get into some more of these questions. I'm trying to keep an eye on the clock. Um, so the, the question came through is balancing motherhood. You know, two of us are mothers, two of us are not necessarily, but we do have other things we have to balance in our lives outside of, um, outside of, you know, outside of work and outside of our clients. Um, so how do you do it? You know, like, how do you all manage to have lives to take care of your families and continue to be the badasses that you are every single day? Man, I'm not sure how well I do it, to be honest with you, but uh, you know, I just try, I try to like, what I do now and look, because I'm in my own company now and I, in all of my, um, my clients are only women, you know, we have different conversations. It's not like somebody is demanding to have a call on a Saturday at five during, you know, my kid's soccer, you know, game. Unless I say, I'm, it's during my kid's soccer game, I'm cool with it, which I have done before, you know? It's, there, there's, um, for me and with my clients and, and the situation now, there's a much more, um, there's much more empathy and generosity in how we, in respect and how we deal with each other and talk to each other. I was doing a really big deal you know, with a female founded company that was selling to another big company. And we did need to talk a lot on the weekends, but the conversations were, okay, well, when is, you know, your daughter taking her nap and then we can have the call, you know? So right now, and look, and I think COVID has, is highlighted so much, you know, that I just had to make it a priority. And quite frankly, I had to leave, you know, jobs where it was not, I was not able to be a good mother. I had to, and I had to do things and move to places that allowed me because I was in places that would say like, if I left at 4.30 to go trick-or-treating with my kid, you know, my, with my kids, it'd be like, oh, aren't you lucky that you got to do that? You know, just nine shitty remarks also, by the way, from women. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not willing to miss these kinds of things. And I'm sorry that you didn't do that because you really missed an amazing opportunity, you know? And so, you know, you have to, you know, and I think COVID like as horrible as it's been, it has allowed the whole world to see that people are people and they're parents. And for so long, especially in this industry, we've had to hide that we're women and in particular hide that we're mothers. And it's just wrong, you know, and it's wrong. And we need to be able to be there for our kids and show that we can still, like, if you want to talk to me, like I'm, if I want to eat, you know, with my kids every night, I will do that. That does not make me any, like, doesn't make me worse is it like as your advocate or you know, working for you. I can pick it up at nine when they go to bed. Like, don't tell me what my workday is because it was defined by men. The workday was defined by men so they could get out in the morning and didn't have to deal with the kids and get home in time for dinner and say goodbye to the kids. So like, they're a great dad. That's how it was defined. So, you know, trying to get caught in this like traditional way of doing things for a woman and women like us, like I can't. Like, so I just do the best I can. And I'm honest when I, when it comes to like talking about like things that are going on with my kids. Oh, I can't because I'm doing X, Y, Z, you know? It's fine. Have, have any of you noticed given, you know, Zoom culture over the last year that when men, when their kids, when their babies enter the screen, everybody stops and says, oh, how cute. Like, oh no, 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 it's okay. Like, oh, look at your little child. You know, and, but I feel like when our, our female colleagues are still like, a, like, like, and, and like the guys are very, very proud. They're like, this is my child. Um, and I feel like sometimes as women, you know, when the children come into the screen, it's sort of like, there's that, that flash of embarrassment, you know, like, yeah, you know, shame, women, like women are still shamed about it. It's really sad, you know, and JJ, I feel the same way you do. I'm not sure. Sh- I do not care. Like I will say to clients, I will say to the biggest executives, I can't do that. I'm going to my son's soccer game. And then there's silence on the phone. Like, I, I just don't care. You know, you have to set your priority list. And then when, if someone pushes back at me, I just say no is a complete sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I want to give a different twist on things because obviously, you know, although I've I've been married 31 years, Rob and I couldn't have children. And so just a, a, a different aspect of, you know, what, 
what is what is the heart, right? When you're a woman and you wanna be able to take care of your family and still work and you're still competent and you have a passion. And I've kind of gotten to that place, you know, now over the years since, you know, we've, we've built the practice and, you know, I'm looking forward as to what does, um, you know, creating partnerships look like, what does long legacy look like, right? When you don't have children to hand a business down to, or you don't, that obviously aren't following in your footsteps. And then that longer term view of, you know, what do you do from a, you know, a philanthropic Point. And so that's always been in the forefront of my mind because I didn't have my, my own children. So all of you who know me know that my husband and I, you know, founded a school in, in Haiti. And I can tell you there's been nothing more rewarding than, than watching a single teacher that we sent into St. Michelle who taught children under an avocado tree to be educating 120 kids and feeding, you know, 350 meals a day and there be running water and wells and plumbing and all of those things together that, you know, just blow your mind watching this, you know, seven, eight year evolution. And so I hope that the people who are dialed in will know that when you get to that place, it's such an amazing, um, it's such an amazing milestone to reach when really without restraint, you're able to sew into other people's lives. And for those kids, and we employ women, so women in St. Michelle don't have jobs. We have teachers and people who cook for the kids. And, you know, I, I never, I, I, I'm, I'm always blown away. Like when a client comes, we had a client a couple of years ago, probably two years ago, come and say, hey, you know, we want to make a donation to the school. What's your greatest need right now? And from a security standpoint, we needed, you know, a full fence, pretty high, you know, security for the kids. And literally we had a client who built the entire fence around the property. So just a little different take on it since I don't have my my own wee ones, although I love fur babies and other people's babies. and. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a reason why people call you Mama Lou and wish you happy Mother's Day. Like, I've seen it. Like, I've, like people wish you happy Mother's Day every year um, because you are like a mother to so many people. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give one other spin. You know, I, I, I haven't been able to have children uh, either. Um, I would love to. Um, I've actually spoken uh, to JJ in, in passing about this, and I know that when I'm ready, she's gonna be a wonderful advisor uh, for what I'm thinking about doing and what I'd like to do. Um, but I also have, you know, and well, my father's passed away, but I have a, a, a mother who is, who is, who is aging uh, and who is by herself and who, with whom I'm very close. Uh, I have um, nieces and nephews uh, whom I love and adore and am very much a part of their lives and they are very, very much a part of mine. Uh, whether they are, you know, like interning uh, for, for, for me or just, you know, peppering me with different questions as they get older and older. The point is, is that, yeah, and then there's the philanthropic work that I do as well. Like the point is, is that all of us have, and it's actually, for me, very fulfilling to have different ways of, on the one hand, um, you know, balancing and manifesting my maternal instinct uh, and then balancing all of that with my professional aspirations and with my career aspirations and my career goals, with building a really strong uh, foundation in that regard. And I think it's important for each of us, you know, as more and more women enter, you know, into these positions of power, as more and more of us are finding success, uh, you know, at the highest levels of our career, I think it's really important that we continue to nurture that empathy and that compassion, because whether somebody is a mother, uh, you know, in the traditional sense, or whether they are not, um, you know, people have lives um, and they have things that are of concern to them, you know, that take them away from work. You know, if my mother calls me uh, in the middle of the day or if she FaceTimes me in the middle of the day, it doesn't matter what else I have going on. I stop everything because she doesn't do that unless she, she needs to talk about something. Now, sometimes the things she needs to talk about are things that Maybe I don't think she needs to talk about it at that moment in time, but I still need to be there for her. Um, and uh, it's important for us to give each other the space uh, to do that. And what I say to folks is your best clients and your best business partners 
are going to understand the human need for you to do that. And if you're working with people who don't give you the space and who don't respect that part of your life, they may not necessarily be the right people for you to be working with. Um, and turns out that there are a lot of other great people to work with. So I think the last question that I'm gonna put up uh, as we start to, to, to wind down on the hour is, and I'm curious about this, I don't think I've asked any of you this before, which is how did you become as successful as you are? <laughs> And I know, Lou, you'll say that I read and I studied. I, you know, I, I have a guess as to what each of you are going to say, but i just love to know, you know, like, how did you become this? Like, how did you become somebody or, or, or individuals from somebody like me who wanted to come into the music industry and who came into the music industry after another career? Um, you're my role models, you know, like you're, you're women who I look up to. Like, how did you become this successful? I mean, I think, first of all, I don't consider myself successful anytime somebody says that. I'm like, I go home every day. I think that's part of the, you know, the C first, go home every day thinking about, you know, the, the 20 things that didn't go the way you thought they should instead of the 50 things that blew you out of the water that were great. But, you know, this is what I would say, you know, do a great job plan and follow through. I think the, you know, Dina got on my ass yesterday because she's like, I need you to do this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Dina, I'm too busy to do it right now. And she's like, Lou, because she's such a witch. She goes, I can just call so-and-so who happened to be another business manager and I can have that. I'm like, you're such a witch. I just, by the way, we, we definitely um, commiserate. But anyway, Dina busted my ass. So yes, you should follow through, even though apparently I don't sometimes. Did you so, do it? Um, <laughs> Did you do it? Today, I would get it to you. And it's not the end of the day, by the way. Okay, two on. So, you know, my, my simple plan, do a, here's the thing I want to say about that. When I say, do a great job, plan and follow through. Everybody who works for me, even though the number's high, right? The people who do a great job, I know who they are. I try to acknowledge who they are. Like when those projects come up, thanks for doing a great, I want people, you know, to be seen. JLo uh, has somebody who does uh, creative uh, design work for her. Her name is Sean Barton. And, you know, she goes all the way back to the Puffy Uptown days as well and she said she she always has this saying i see you and i love that she's like i see you how are you doing and i think sometimes you know that goes a a long way when you talk about being successful is just to stop and acknowledge that you see people mm -hmm. that's all i got dina what about you well, I, listen, I am a doer. So I, I'm, I'm like Lou. I'm like, what do you mean successful? Because I'm still hustling. Like it's a hustle. Every day is a hustle. The same hustle as I had 30 years ago, I'm having as a hustle now. And people ask me, why did you decide to open your own firm? I love that question. Because the answer always shocks people. I go, what are you talking about? Like I had a choice. No one wanted me. Okay. I was a woman. I went to the wrong school, unlike JJ. I was dyslexic. I was just recovering from drugs and alcohol. I was like not wanted. You know, I opened my own law firm because I was interning at a law firm um, as I was waiting tables at night, interning for free at a law firm, blow, which basically I filed the guy's papers and was blowing up his kid's basketball. And I happened to meet a Fanny Shakur who saw me. That's what she would say to me. I see you. And since my mother was involved, you know, helped fundraise for the Black Panther Party, I grew up on like the Fanny Shakur teaching. So I knew so much about her life as an activist that she and I connected right away. And the reason I opened my own law firm is because she went around telling everybody I was opening my own law firm. So, <laughs> hey, you will love this, JJ. Remember David Cohen when he ran business affairs at Interscope? Yeah. He called me up one day and he goes, Afeni just told me you're opening up your own law firm and I have to help you. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, you know, you just do what you can. And, and I'm just so blessed that I'm independent. You know, it's hard for me to believe that I literally, I have 10 lawyers that work for me. That's crazy. You know, I'm in the same space I've been since 2001. This year will be my 20th anniversary of being in the firm. Babe, you are never working for somebody else. That yeah. is. That You're is. virtually unemployable by a man anyway. So let's just do that. <laughs> Don't worry, so am I. I can't be out here talking all this shit and be like employable. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I will take it back a little bit in that, you know, what is your definition of success, right? And I think it's different for women than it is for men. And I think this whole movement for gender equality and a lot of things that have been happening and a lot of things opened up for women after me too, when we started, you know, sharing our stories and realizing, shit, this is happening to all of us. We've all been sexually harassed. We've all been, you know, there's been gender, you know, harassment with all of us and unequal pay and all of that kind of shit. We've all been talked about, you know, as, as shrill and bossy, even though I can call you Dina bossy, she can, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, we've all been, you know, you know, we're, you know, we're emotional and they're passionate and, you know, they're commendable and we're, you know, bitchy and, all those kinds of things or witchy or a witch you know um and so i think it's um and a lot of it for women and the work i've been doing it you know around gender equality is a lot about you know what is success it's like this balance it's like our collective female wealth and how we can show up and be women not women acting as men and be successful at that and you know we have something to say like our approach to things matters. We're fierce advocates. We're mothers at heart. Even though you do not have biological children, we have that in us. We assess risk differently because if we didn't, every baby would be dead when they were born because we're like, oh, we, we have the ability, our bodies have the ability to say, oh, we're going to have a baby and now we need to calm down. Whereas men go sell, sell, buy, buy, all that kind of stuff. We have unique traits and, and things about us that make us amazing business women and so for me and success it's like as long as I have a passion for it I am on the right side of history and I am and I know that I'm doing the right things for my clients it's not necessarily about money that is a component we'll get to next but like that is one big thing for success right when it starts feeling like you're feeding into the patriarchal system that's when I'm like I can't do it Right. But the other part is money and women have the shame about money. It's like, oh, I don't need that much money or, you know what? I only need X, Y, Z. Fuck that. You need as much fucking money as the market demands that that man who is, is, is next to you and is equally as competent, which probably isn't even true. You need add another 25% because we don't have power until we have money. And when we have power, we can change the world and we will be a much better place. But we have to go get that money and we have to demand it and we have to help each other do it. Just like Dina and Lou told me to go do it and, you know, to do it myself. Like, you think I'm successful. That's great. I still need people to tell me to do things, right? And so for women, it's like getting over that shame, make as much money as you can. I don't care if you want to, you're fine living on $200,000 a year, get the 2 million that you should be getting and then donate the 1.8, actually invest in female founded companies, right. don't donate it, invest into other women because there's actually studies and facts that show that trickle down economics will only work amongst women. We started lending circles, we started all of that. So for me, it's like, you know, saying what, how are you successful? I'm successful because I have a group of women that support me, I support them. I'm doing it for the right reasons. I have purpose and I care about money and I want to make everybody money because that's how we're going to win. I don't know what I would do without each of you as part of my life. <laughs> um, because, you know, I, I was that person, JJ, you know, like I was that person who, you know, would apologize. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when, I started getting to know each of you better and, 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 and counting you on each of you as my dear friends. I started seeing and understanding that I wasn't just doing a disservice to myself by having that attitude, but I'm doing a disservice to other people, to other women. Right. Uh, and, 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 and thereby doing a disservice, uh, you know, to, to clients by not 
making sure that I am understanding, you know, my worth uh, in the marketplace. That it's not just about the worth of everybody else, but that yeah. it's about each of our individual worth as well. Uh, and so, I first of all want to thank each of you for um, coming and being on this panel with me. Um, in, in, in terms of success, I would define it uh, loosely as, and I actually have defined it this way, as, as having the ability to direct your career uh, and, and having the ability to make choices um, and, and, and not, not allowing yourself to be changed uh, by the crap that happens in life uh, and in the business, but to continue to keep moving, a fo moving forward, knowing fully who you are, what you value, what you're about, why you're doing what you're doing. And quite frankly, to be able to look to your left and your right as you ascend and to see other women around you. You know, right. it's not successful. Like, you know, to Dina's point earlier, you know, like for all the people who are like lip service about, I support women this, I support women that, and they have no women who are on their advisory teams or, you know, like, like on their executive teams, no women, you know, whom they're investing in you know, no women who are in their circle, it's, it's lip service. That's all it is. It's saying, saying it because it's what we talk about now. Mm -hmm. But what I love about everybody here is that you have genuine integrity in what you say, you know, like, like JJ, you're about changing things in terms of uh, pay equity and making sure that women are supposed to be where they're supposed to be. And you walk that walk and you talk that talk every single day. The same thing is true with Lou. The same thing is true with Dina. I try to make sure that that's true for me as well, is to make sure that I am walking the walk that I talk every single day in everything that I do. So to me, that's success. It's integrity. It's having integrity in what you do and how you're doing it uh, and, and knowing who you are. So um, I, I know that we're supposed to be, we're right on, we're right at two o'clock. Uh, and so I want to thank everybody again for coming through. Um, uh, thank you for submitting your questions in advance and for participating in this conversation. I wish all of you well in your lives and your careers. Uh, and for those of you who are, uh, you know, here in Chicago or do a lot of business in Chicago, I encourage you to join the Chicago chapter. Um, we have a lot of really great things we're thinking about doing, including uh, a, a writing camp, uh, you know, with uh, women engineers, women producers, uh, women songwriters, you know, that's the other place where we want to make sure that it's not just, you know, the executives, but also, you know, the creatives. We need so many more women to be recognized and to be seen for their creative work and for their creative capacity instead of constantly having to hide behind guys, guys, um, constantly, you know, like just not being seen, uh, you know, as, as producers and engineers. So we're going to be doing stuff around that. Um, and we're also going to be working on doing the thing that women do have always done extremely well, which is just building networks and relationships amongst all of the different uh, music business people and, and creatives and artists here in Chicago. So please join us. Thank you all so much for coming through today. Um, and a very special thank you to my great friends, Lou, JJ, and Dina. I love you so much. I'm so glad that I get to say this in public in front of everyone. And I'm so glad that you exist. And I hope that your effect and our effect can continue to ripple through. I wish everyone to have uh, a, a girl squad or a group of Charlie's Angels, as we've sometimes <laughs> yeah. ourselves like this. <laughs> exactly. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. That was. Everybody's gone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Was it good? Was it okay? <laughs>